Very good evening to you traders. Let you all log in. Thank you for joining me on this very bullish <laughs> time in the market. Yes, our, our crazy moves we're having. Uh, I mean, got something for everyone, right? Forex moving, gold moving, silver shifting, US equity shifting. Yeah, there's volatility out there. Great time to be a trader. But, you know, one thing is in the topic of the webinar. But one thing is that being seduced by volatility, it's so easy, right, to kind of wake up or come to the screen, whatever you're doing, and go, oh, market's up. I need to get on. I need to do something. I need to do something. I should be making money. I'm a trader. I should be making money. You know, and it's 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 kind of reframing that in your mind and saying, listen, volatility creates opportunity, but it doesn't necessarily mean that I am going to see the setup that I want. I need to still stick to the process. I need to follow through and do things that are aligned with what I'm looking for rather than shifting and just going, market's moving, I need to get on board. Because you know, that's easy to do. That's easy to fall into that trap. You want to be the trader who's professional, who stands, stands, steps back, stands back, whichever you want to do, and observes and says, right, where's my spot? There's volatility, there's opportunity, let me wait. And if I can be sniper-like and really wait for that sweet spot, then the, you know, the odds are on my side. And if I can do that again and again and again, and maybe go into some advanced techniques like adding to the trades or trading more size on the on the type of trades that you like, then it can be, you know, volatility can be a good thing. But you just don't want to fall into the trap where you just dive straight in, market shifting, loads of stuff is happening, and you know, you're getting caught out in all sorts of swinging moves. So use volatility as your advantage. Uh okay, so well, let's just get started straight away, guys. Um risk disclaimer, as always, you know the you know the score by now if you've been here before. You know the name of the game, risky business trading. Um, make sure you know what you're doing, understand the risks, and the you know it's not all about the rewards. There's risks there uh, as well. So uh, make sure you read that and understand what you're getting into. All right. So this one, oh, this is one of my. I'm really looking forward to doing this one. I, I, I've got a real thing for the tick index. So we're going to spend some time, 45 minutes or so, maybe a little bit less actually, depending on how kind of uh, how much of a tangent I go. Uh, by the way, I appreciate your time. You know, listen, I know the markets are wild. Uh, they've calmed down a little. Well, I say they're coming off the highs, but I'm sure you've got them up on one screen and listening to me on the other screen. I appreciate your time. I'm going to make it as valuable as I can for you, as I always try to do. I always try to give you, you know, what I think is, is good value so you can take something away and go, hey, you know what? That's interesting. That's going to help me. Um, so I'll do my best today to do that for you. Uh, so thank you for logging in or thank you for watching the recording. Uh, yeah, Tick Index. Oh, this oh, I wanted to do this one for a while. I was thinking, when can I do this one? Can I do this one? I was like, okay, this is perfect time for it. We've got the volatility. We've got it, it. It's it's one of these things that comes into its own on and off, and I'll explain that in a, in a bit. But um, listen, it, it's really for oh, let's go back to that. forty-five minutes or so. If you want to ask questions, please feel free. There's a little questions box. There should be stick them in there. I'll try and get to them at the end. Um, if there's anything you want some clarity on or anything uh, trading related, I'll do my best to get to that question for you. Uh, I don't pretend to know, have all the answers, but I will I will definitely try to give my opinion on something uh, and you can kind of take it for for what it is. So if you don't know me, guys, Mark Holstead, uh, run Traders Mastermind, been trading uh, since 2001 now, um, traded all sorts of different markets or market environments. Um, and one thing that, you know, I got interested in the tick index, I was trying to look back on my old journals. I had some here, I've got a pile of them, and I was trying to find out when I started looking at the tick index. It was a while ago, it was probably a decade plus ago. It wasn't first started my trading. Um, it was when I kind of shifted to US indices. And I was like, okay, this thing makes sense. There's got to be something here. Um, and so I want to share that with you today. And I still use this today. It's very, very useful. I think it's a very useful tool. And I think it's a short learning curve. And the good thing about tick index is it can mesh in with your existing strategy. So I guess. Um, this is probably intermediate advanced. You know, as much as I'd love your attention to listen, I think there's value here. I, I would always say to you, if you're struggling with risk, you're struggling with discipline, that needs to be capped off first. So by all means, stay, take notes, enjoy the webinar, absolutely. Um, but, you know, from me, just to you as a friend and as someone, you know, knowing if you want to get better at trading, then the discipline focus is where you really need to be because you can run this strategy perfectly and do everything right. And then now and then you, if you blow it away on impulsive trades, it's it's not going to be effective. So, um, but bell means, you know, take notes, enjoy. If you're, if you're in, if you're into trading, you, you, you just like me, right? You like, you like hearing about trading stuff. You like talking trading, you like trading, you like everything about the markets, right? We, we just 
eat, sleep, breathe uh, at trading. Okay, so let me just double check my notes, make sure there's nothing I've missed there. Um, oh, yes, I'm going to give you a copy of the slides. And I, let me give you the link now, because what you might want to do is I'll be emailed to you instantly, and you may want to kind of write notes on the slides. So I was thinking about when I was you know, looking, listening to webinars, um, one thing I'd do is kind of download them. If I get the slides, then I'll be writing notes. So if you go to the Traders Mastermind, tradersmastermind.com forward slash ticks, Traders Mastermind, all one word, forward slash ticks, pump in your, your name email there. They'll be sent pretty much instantly to you. So you can get access to them. If you want to, I, I kind of sometimes put them onto an iPad and use an Apple Pencil to mark up and write some notes. Sure, Samsung's got an equivalent, that type of thing. But I'll give that to you now so you can uh, use those. So tradersmastermind.com forward slash ticks for... The slides. Okay. Anything else in my from my other screen here? If any notes I've got before we get cracking with this? Um, yeah, that's it. The reason I got into ticks. Okay, let me tell you this little brief story. Um, I was exploring all sorts of different things as we do with traders, right? We're trying to find our feet. We're trying to find an edge. Uh, I'm going to check out the, you know, the webinar I did when we talked about you know, discovering your trading edge, and I was like, okay, there's got to be something out there that's maybe people are missing that's maybe interesting can give me a little bit of a clue that's that's off the beaten path so to speak and i went down uh put call ratio went down advanced declines or the rabbit hole of advanced declines put call ratio uh, i went down trin i went down at ticks and i was a very short-term trader and none of those resonate with me apart from ticks because this is something that makes a lot of sense now listen if you're listening to this and you're us equities trader this is exactly for you if you don't trade us equities then you know maybe this won't have direct value unless you're perhaps trading something as a, and using equities as a proxy that's you know a possibility and edge that maybe you can discover but it, it's, it's it's really interesting from a supply demand perspective of what's actually going on under the hood and this is why you know regardless of what you trade yes it's going to have extra value for you if you are trading the us indices or the european indices during the us session but you know just if you're trading forex you're trading commodities uh, it just it, whilst the tick index isn't particularly useful, the idea and concept behind it is, and it's that thinking in terms of supply and demand. Um, okay, so let's get started. As you, if you are regular here, very welcome. Uh, welcome back to you. If you're new here, you're very welcome too. Uh, I like to put a Stoic quote on my webinars. I'm a big fan of of the Stoics and trying to bring that into trading. Um, from a perspective of understanding emotions, understanding reaction to emotions, and trying to control our behavior. And the Stoics were very much about that. I think people misunderstand them. They were emotionless. That wasn't really the case. I'm not saying I'm an expert in the Stoics by any stretch of imagination, but I take what I what I find valuable from them. Here's a great quote from Epic, Epictetus. Uh, a ship should not ride on a single anchor, nor life on a single hope. And that's really good from a trading perspective because we should be well-rounded, you know, just, just focusing on trading. Yes, we need to have that focus. We need to be pushing. We need to be trying to get better and better. But, you know, I believe that, you know, if you hold it too tight and you, your identity is staked too much on the outcome of your trading the week or the day, then it's very, very difficult to shrug off normal ups and downs of trading, luck, bad luck, run of losers, run of winners. And so it's something to bear in mind. All right, let's get to the meat. Let's talk tick. Uh, what exactly is the tick index? Going to cover that. We're going to and why it can be so effective. We're going to look at some tick index golden rules uh, and how to set up your trading screens. Uh, the ticks to zero pullback trade. That's a good one for timing momentum, and then spotting short term exhaustion, uh, which is really useful if you kind of use an exit signal or kind of sometimes to fade it as well. We'll talk about that. And uh, kind of wide range ticks, which is another strategy. So we've got three kind of distinct strategies for you. Uh, today is a good place to kind of start. All right, so let's spend some time. What is the new? What is the tick index? It, it, it is actually an index. It's not an indicator. It's not a stochastic Bollinger Band. It's not derived from price at all. It is actually a genuine index that is sent by the New York Stock Exchange, just like they would send uh, an equity index. You know, just like you would see an index from the Dow or the quote of the Dow or uh, the S and P 500 or NASDAQ 100 or FTSE 100. It's a natural index. And, and this is this is why it becomes, I think, is interesting. So there are around two and a half thousand stocks. You'd be surprised how hard it is to find out how many stocks there are on the NICE. But it, you, you Google it, 2,800, 2,200, 2,500. So 
there were, I'm going to say there's a round. I've not counted each one, and Google seems to have varying uh, different results, which is amazing to me. But I've gone with the one that I think is the most relevant, the most up to date. Two and a half thousand stocks, give or take, listed on the NICE. And the tick index basically compares stock trading, stocks trading on an uptick versus stocks trading on a downtick. So best, best kind of done with an example. So an uptick is basically if, it, if it's hitting that offer or ask. Okay, so imagine we're 49 bid, 50 offer or 50 ask, whether where high in the world you are. Um, if we're hitting 50, if it's trading at 50, and the last traded price was 50, that's an uptick, right? If it's trading 49, that's a downtick. And it can stay there for a while, but if it's if it goes from 50 to 49, downtick, back to 50, uptick, go to 51, uptick, stays at 51, it's still an uptick, 52, uptick, you get the idea. Okay, so what it does is it aggregates all of that and it says, right, so let's assume there are two and a half, two, two and a half thousand stocks out there. It basically takes the number that are trading on uptick and minuses the number that are trading on downtick. So you've got 1,500 of those stocks that are trading on uptick, i.e. on the offer or the ask, and 1,000 who have traded on the bid or have last traded on the bid. Then the tick index reading is going to be plus 500. Okay, so it's taking that sh very, very short-term pulse of the market. It's taking um, a real kind of feel for what's going on in terms of supply demand, in terms of who is in control or who is not in control. That's not correct. Who is more aggressive, right? Because we've got to be careful we don't fall into the fallacy there's more buyers than sellers. That's nonsense because for every buyer, there has to be a seller. So you're always going to be matched. But what is interesting to us as traders and what moves markets is who is more aggressive. You know, a passive seller sitting at 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55 doesn't really move the market. It's the buyer who steps up and takes that offer, lifts that offer, lifts that offer, lifts that offer, who moves the market. So this gives us an idea of who is more aggressive at that moment in time. And you might be like, wow, that's a real snapshot. It is, but we'll start to see some patterns on the, on the, on the chart in a moment of how we can kind of decipher this. Uh, another example, just to kind of make it clear, if uh, 1,250 are trading on an uptick and 1,250 of those stocks are trading on downtick, the tick index, index reading is going to be zero. And the other way around as well, you know, 1,500 are trading on downtick and 1,000 are trading on uptick, it can go into minus. So it oscillates around the zero level. And zero is, as you could probably imagine, is really neutral. You can expect it to be neutral. Um, so think of it like a very short term reading on sentiment so it's going to oscillate around neutral around zero being kind of neutral and nothing really going on supply demand being pretty much in balance um plus a thousand indicates strength and buying minus a thousand indicates weakness and selling generally speaking that's a real generalization but that's a good way of framing it in your mind and so you can see here i've got it set i'm going to show how to set up the charts in a moment how i set off of course set them up how you how you wish but kind of the way that I've I've evolved over the years to have them uh, I will show you but you can kind of see it's an odd looking chart right it looks like a chart in a range because it ultimately is because it's reading you know think about people buying on the on the offer on the offer on the offer on the offer you're gonna get high tick readings and it stops and maybe half go on the bid it goes back to zero then we go back to a trading all on the bid it goes down so it's going to oscillate around zero um, and it looks like an unusual type of chart but you know we can decipher some things from that uh, so setting up your screens. So one thing to do is if you're on TradingView, I know many of you guys are on TradingView, uh, another platform, search for the NYSE tick. Uh, and it's called the NYSE cumulative tick. Now there is a very nominal exchange fee, three bucks a month, I think. It is three bucks a month, I checked. I don't think it is three bucks a month, especially with TradingView it is. But don't let that stop you. I like, know it's like it's not the three bucks it's the hassle of if you don't have premium which i think you should have premium uh trading view it's, it's very very useful and you know, exceptional value uh this is not a plug for trading view by any stretch of imagination but i think it's a good value charting package uh, and you know and three three dollars a month it's worth the friction of getting your credit card out just to if you like the end of the webinar you think you know what i'm going to try it out it's, it's probably worth having a look at it um uh, but it's yes, three dollars a month because it's coming from the New York Stock Exchange and they have an exchange fee. So that's where you find it. NYSE tick. Uh, like I said, it's an actual index. So you get an actual index coming is why there is an exchange fee. Um, okay, so setting up your screens. Let's set up the screens before we go on to strategies and how to kind of look for some ideas and different things. Uh, let's set up the screen. So I like to put the tick index uh, kind of like this. 
uh, with a horizontal fixed line at plus a thousand, a horizontal fixed line at minus a thousand, a kind of slightly lighter, again, the, the, um, the formatting's personal preference, but a zero line in, and and then a one minute, how about a one minute bar chart? So I have a fixed scale, you know, approximately 1500 to, to minus 1500. Um, and I want a bar chart because I, I'm not really interested in the color of the bars per se. I'm more interested in the, in the direction, the shape of things. So it's a very unique type of setup. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about other stuff I've got there in the moment. But that really then gives you everything you need. You know, if you have an auto setup, you're going to get ticks flying off. It's going to distort. You want to have that fixed area. There's your band plus a thousand, minus a thousand. So you've got a reference point of where things are. I think that's super, super effective. Uh, and also I've got on here is a, a 15 period moving average, just one minute, by the way, a 15 period moving average, just to see the flavor of ticks. And there's a setup for that, a strategy for that uh, later in the day. Uh, an ATR on one period, which is just indicating the kind of range of ticks. Again, strategy for that uh, in a moment. Um, and, and this kind of, this, this, this really gives you a good overview of what's happening. Um, an optional thing you can do is add a Bollinger Band on the ticks. Uh, 22. Not not my favorite thing. I prefer to use these static lines, but sometimes ticks are doing their own thing and you still want to find out where that stretch point is. And obviously, obviously Bollinger Bands are based on a standard deviation. So that's a way to do it. So let's move on to how I like to have it on my screen, which is that one there, uh, which you can't see. You can see this one while I'm pointing at it. That's a silly thing to do, but hey, this is what it looks like. Um, market's selling off a bit, actually. Interesting. The... Um, the vision for me is that I want to be able to see uh, the ticks underneath, and you can do that with with TradingView. You can do it with any other chart pa platform, of course you can. But so I can go along and see kind of price aligned with ticks. Uh, and that's sometimes you slightly out of sync. Funnily enough, the 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 uh, range and the and the and the scale when you're using a 24-hour product like the US 30 through Pepperstone, just because the ticks is just a regular trading hour session. But if you use Spy, uh, or if you use DIA. Or if you use YM Futures, you know, maybe you're using that and then you're using it as a proxy to trade via spread bit or CFD, uh, then it lines up perfectly. So sometimes there's a problem with the scale, but it's fine. Normally you can see, you can put your cursor on it. But I like to basically see what the ticks are doing in relation to price, right? Because that's that's the key. That's what we really need to do. Uh, okay, so now we've set up our screens. Now we know what the tick index is. I hope you, hopefully some people out there are getting a little bit excited by this and are going... Oh yeah, you know what? That that that's interesting. Oh, I can get an actual pulse. I can get a pulse of what's happening in the underlying market on a real, literal, tick by tick basis. Hmm. Maybe some of the cogs turning for you a bit now and going. Oh, I didn't realize I could get that. There are so many things that open up, and hopefully we'll fill in some of those gaps a little bit now with uh, with some strategies. So rules of thumb first: uh, plus five hundred to minus five hundred. Is, is balanced supply and demand. Generally speaking, there's generalizations, of course, we've got to generalize in trading, but that kind of oscillation between plus 500, minus 500, just chugging, no one's really uh, making urgent orders, or if they are, it's not a big group of people. Because think about it, when we get a really extreme reading, that's when a lot of people are like, I need to transact now. Because you think about your choice as a trader, you choose whether to put a limit order in, or a market order in. And the only real reason why you do one or the other is whether you're sensitive to price or you're sensitive to time. If you think about it, right, I don't care when I get filled, but I must get filled at 50, you're going to use a 50 limit, 50 limit bid or 50 limit off whether you're selling. But if you're like, hey, I don't care what price I get, I just need to get in or get out now, you're going to use a market order, right? And that's your decision that we make as traders every day. And most people I think most people probably use market orders as a, as a theme, um, but that might be just because, hey, the price at my level, I need to get in at that point in time, bang, I need to do it. So you think about the underlying market, those extreme readings generally mean that there's an imbalance. It means that there's a, there's a, a, a group consensus is one of urgency to the high side, to the, to the offer, i.e. they're buying, needs to buy now, now, now's market order or need to lift offers versus how many people are hitting those bids. And when it's skewed one way or another, we're getting a little bit of a, a flavor into who is more aggressive at that point in time. And maybe you can start to you kind of to go down the path now in your mind and thinking, okay, so the more aggressive side, they're the ones that move the markets generally. Now, okay, there's an argument to say there could be a wall of selling sitting there. And of course, that 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 can happen. And maybe we'll look at that in a moment. But generally speaking, people hitting offers, 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 that's going to cause the price to uptick and move up. 
of course, if we're long, that's going to be beneficial for us. So this is kind of quite interesting, right? So persistent high readings generally indicate a trend. As you can imagine, how does a trend form? A trend form is when people are just paying higher and higher prices. Look at today up until now, <laughs> or the morning, should I say. Look at yesterday, great example yesterday, uh, across you know multiple things. You look at cable, you're looking at uh, equities, silver, uh, these type of things. It was, the trend was there because people just offers, offers, lifting offers, lifting offers, lifting offers, lifting offers, uh, and stalling a bit. So persistent high readings generally indicate trend. Of course, that's going to kind of ma marry up. Spikes higher or lower indicate exhaustion. These are good opportunities. We'll get to those in a sec. But you know, you think about what's happening. If everyone suddenly gets stopped, everyone's going to be like, wham, hitting the bid. You know, market goes through lows, wham, everyone hitting the bid. Those ticks are going to go boof down minus a thousand, minus 1200, minus you know, more than that sometimes, where it's like, wow, everyone's just got to get out. And there's no one is sensitive to price. Well, the majority are absolutely sensitive to time. They're hitting bids. You know, sometimes we get those big flushes and that indicates exhaustion. So very, very useful. Uh, they, they're basically like like tape reading in a way. They give you a very short term read on price, um, and, and are very good for trade timing. So let's get to some strategies. Strategy number one: the ticks to zero scalp trade. One of my favorite trades. I you know under the right conditions, this is one. If I'm there and I'm watching for it and I'm waiting and I see the market ripping one direction, I'm always looking for this and on, on, on some form or another. That's always is a bit of a generalization. Um, uh, but in some form or another, this is something that I'm always, let's say I'm always looking for it. Do I always take it? Maybe not, depending on the conditions, depending on how far we've gone, depending on if there's a key level there. All the filters that we that we kind of talk about in grading the trade, which is not a topic perhaps for this webinar, but you know, you might not always take a setup and strategy that appears, depending on the environment it's in, there's some filters that need to be passed before you take the trade. But it's something I like to look for, put it that way. Um, so after we've had a a persistent trend with a matching high tick reading. So chug, 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 high ticks, high ticks, high ticks, high ticks, and to the downside, obviously, for a downtrend, low ticks, low ticks. Price is often going to stall, flag, pull back. You know this, you know, trend moves, obviously, um, obviously, but often uh, consolidate, they pull back, uh, they kind of just grind a little bit, they form a pennant. They, they just do that type of thing, don't they? Where supply demand is like bang, big demand, big demand, and it just drops off. It sits there in that equilibrium space. Very often, ticks then will retrace because you think about it, let's think about what's actually happening. Offers being hit, offers being hit, offers being hit, trend market going up, going up, going up, new offer, new offer, lift, lift, lift. That backs off. People then start hitting the bid a little bit, but there's still some buy. It might have just shuts off the buying. But the stalling of, okay, it's not so aggressive, maybe some people are hitting bid, that's going to show up in ticks going kind of retracing back. As price retrace back, retraces back, ticks are going to retrace back. And so what we want to try and do then is as ticks go down to kind of zero levels, it's not always zero, but it's a, it's a good rule of thumb, we're looking to then get into the trade for a continuation move. So as the trend is kind of stalling, we'll look at some charts in a moment as me making all these gestures in the air when I've got a chart in a moment. But hopefully both will make make it clear we kind of want to get back on that trend so as it pulls back ticks go to zero we want to kind of enter that trade for resumption of the trend and we're exiting the trade uh, into a new high or low in ticks and this is the kind of thing that should work almost immediately and if we don't if we kind of carry on lower and just go straight through zero ticks and start going lower and lower after persistent high ticks that's a red flag to get out because very often that's an indication of a v-shaped reversal and i guess you could trade a strategy from that but we're using a continuation strategy there's a trend tape a momentum strategy continuation trend based strategy it's that type of thing we're looking for a further move uh, an inside out trade if you like in other words markets pulling back a bit and we, we were looking at to looking for it to go to fresh levels Okay, so um, description done. Let's have a look at the chart pattern. Uh, this is a one minute chart of Pepperstone's Dow product, US 30. And, you know, this is where, you know, the good thing is you can chart it on a CFD, you can chart it on futures, you can chart it on any of these things, and then trade the instrument you choose. At the end of the day, if you're trading a spread bet or a CFD or a futures contract, or whatever it may be, um, you know, you can, you can kind of chart it as you want. So this is the drive. We see the big, big, strong drive higher. And actually, this was, I believe, I should have noted it on here. It wasn't so long ago we had this. Um, I believe it was the overnight high or the prior day's high. Either way, it's going to be a key level of resistance. And general rule of thumb that most people 
uh, follow and I like to follow is if we've kind of broken through and consolidating above, I'm probably looking for an extra move. It, it indicates strength, right? Again, generalization, but most of the time. So here we've had this uh, persistent high reading and it's just pushed higher. It's just pushed higher. It's pushed higher. It's pushed higher. It's pushed higher. Uh, we've had persistent high readings in ticks and we followed by retracing ticks to zero now this one is not quite zero like i said before you know very often you'll tag zero but you've got to use a little bit of you know, flexibility here just like if your trade's coming up in a couple of ticks from your exit and starts to turn you might want to you know not not hold on uh, and try and just try and squeeze everything out of it so it's it's again using a little bit of uh, kind of judgment here but the idea of this is as as price kind of stagnates after the good strong drive, good strong move in ticks, holding near highs, you know, we're getting plus plus like a thousand ticks, plus a thousand ticks. Um, you know, the, the average is kind of well above 500. That's buying on offer, just buying, buying, buying across the whole stock exchange. And your argument might be, okay, well, the Dow is not the whole uh, the stock exchange, and you're quite right, it's only 30 stocks, but it's very mirrored. And you can use this on uh, SP 500 or Dow. I'll talk about in a moment. There are some Dow ticks. I just don't find them as effective. So I just prefer trading the Dow, and the ticks do work just as effectively on this as they do the S&P 500. You know, most of the time they're in sync here with these these, these two. So price is higher, pulls back, and you know, look, and this is such a measly pullback anyway. Little flag patterns really occurring. If you imagine this was the hard right side of the screen, you wouldn't see any of this. You just see this kind of high tight flag. Um, that rejection might concern you a bit, but fine. Ticks come in. I uh, nearly go to zero. And there's your buy point. And your idea is that you kind of look into to, you're almost cause the, the thing is we have when we're trying to buy a retracement, right? We don't know how far the retracement's going to go. Sometimes it's kind to us, gives us that little wick to play off. Sometimes it comes back to a level, but sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it's so strong like this that it doesn't even come back to the breakout level. And and it's just sitting there in the in the in the kind of upper. 10% of the move and you're like well I feel like it's chasing a bit but you know it's ultimately retracing if it really wants to go it's going to be powerful so ticks help you with that because they give you that rubber band effect of like a band stretching bands coming back okay now I'm going to kind of pick it up again uh, for, a, for a kind of a move to the high side um, so what happens next market starts to then pick up pick up pick up pick up pick up pick up push right up and we take out new highs in the Dow, and we get a just a new high print in the ticks. I'm going to kind of show you some exit strategies in a moment, but this is kind of how we're aligned. This is kind of how we want to do this. Uh, oh, I did it. I actually did it on here. Of course. Why did? Why would I have not put the exit on there? I've done it on a separate chart. There you go. Exit on a new high spike in ticks. That's you no. Know, then that now. Let me just let me just qualify this. That's if you are operating the scalp trade. Okay, if you are doing the scalp trade. And you just want to use it pure, purely for a scalp. Those are good rules, general rules. Again, you know, you under, you kind of adjust it to fit and understand, you know, the risks and stuff and how you play it to suit your risk tolerance. But those are general good rules. New high in ticks is one more. Ugh, the buyers just like one little shove. They can't take anymore. They have to buy. It. Have to come in hitting offers, hitting offers, hitting offers. So that's a kind of good rule. Now, if you're using this as a a lever to maybe get on for a bigger move then actually uh, you, you can kind of have the exit strategy that covers your own your own way of doing things. Uh, but if you're trading for a pure scalp play, that ticks to zero, then straight back to new highs. It's a, it's a very, very good thing for you to look into a little bit more. Uh, super valuable way to trade things. Uh, another one here, the downside, we kind of consolidated above this key level, broke down below. Uh, you know, we, we nestled along here. Ticks low, 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 persistently low. Look how they're matching up with this low big flush to the downside then we get this kind of retrace back creeping back up creeping back up just about goes positive on the ticks and that's enough for it to just roll over now you've got the ticks going back to minus a thousand here uh, or you're kind of taking new lows there's opportunities there or you or like i say you, you either take it in the scalp trade we didn't quite get a brand new low in ticks and and again this is real world stuff guys i i, I don't cherry pick the very back i could have gone back months and months and months and picked the perfect things this is literally last week so you know when you've got a really deep reading of minus 1500 ticks you 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 probably got to adjust your exit and go hey 1500 minus 1500 ticks is a damn lot this is when you kind of calibrate your brain and mind to stuff i i probably not going to get that again let me let me use minus a thousand as a good level and use that 
And so there was a nice little, you know, opportunity for a scalp trade there. And, you know, if you were a scalper, I would actually probably expect you to cover that there uh, just because that new low and also the fact that it was a fresh low here and pop back up. If you were a day trader who's holding for maybe an hour or so, that might have been the legging you needed just to hold and, and kind of see, right, I'm not going to I'm not going to close this until the ticks go back above zero. Uh, I need to perhaps got out back down here. So, again, exit strategy is up to you to use this is more uh, some ideas for you to explore a little bit further. Um, OK, so that's the ticks to zero scalp trade. Really, really powerful. Honestly, if you are an index trader and you have c capacity and bandwidth to look at something else like this. And again, I don't want to say you've got to do this. You've got to go and look at it. If you're focused on your risk, you're focused on discipline right now, you know, put this to one side and look to maybe look at it ne next quarter or next month. But if you kind of feel like you've got the capacity and advanced enough to, to do this, then it's well worth investigating. Honestly, it's a really useful, useful tool. Uh, so, yeah, use it on the US 500, the US 30. There is a Dow tick, um, which does exactly the same thing, but it just follows the 30 stocks. It's called the Ticky. Uh, I've found it's have no, no use, or be, I say less effective. That's being kind. It's, you, to me, it's useless. It's too small of a bench, uh, too small of a sample size. That was only 30 stocks. It's just no good for me. Uh, the Nasdaq one is good. Actually, Nasdaq one is good. And it's called Tick Q, and it's uh, Nasdaq across the whole of the Nasdaq uh, exchange, uh, and you can trade US 100 on that. Obviously, you know, via Pepperstone's product, Nasdaq product, which is US 100, and that's good. That's slightly subtle, different patterns. Actually, I didn't want to put them in because kind of confusing stuff into this uh, webinar specifically. But again, you can calibrate yourself to the shape of the ticks of the market that you trade. So that's worth exploring. But I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't even bother going down the Dow route. Yeah, mate, yeah, you know what? If you find something that's interesting going down the Dow ticks, then please let me know. Uh, but I kind of found it to be useful enough because there's only 30 stocks in it, obviously. Uh, look at relative readings. So like all these things, it's how they compare to prior readings. So some days are going to be, you're not going to get a thousand ticks. You're going to get to, you're not going to get these big swings, you know, and most of the time we don't, to be frank, this is happening now because the volatility is spicy. You know, very often you'll get, maybe you get 1000 tick reading or minus a thousand, but very often it'll kind of sit, you know, plus 500 plus 750. So you've got to calibrate what's high and what's low based on the day. So if you're aware waiting for a thousand and it kind of is a slow day, you you're probably waiting forever. So again, relative readings is where it's at. Same with price, right? You can say, oh, I expected a 500 pip move only because you saw that last week, but actually now we're, we're sitting in an 80 pip range. You're going to be, you're going to be disappointed. So relative stuff is, is where it's at with trading uh, as you, as you probably know as well. The chart rules all is the final thing with that. Uh, stay aligned with the market regime. Um, you know, think about what's going on with the market, the structure, the oscillations, the rotations, uh, what people are looking at, how the market's moving. So this is kind of, you know, simple stuff to, to a certain degree. But this is not like you can go into the ticks and say, ah, you know, ticks, you know, ticks are high, I'm going to sell it. You no, know, no, no. You know, it's it's kind of aligning with what you're already doing. If you see momentum and and risk on ton of sentiment, you're looking to buy that kind of first pullback trade. You've got that planned. You're trying to structure it. Ticks might be another way to help guide you get into that trade. So the chart definitely rules all. Um, all right, going back, let's go forwards. Keep moving forwards one step at a time. So summary of that. And before we go to strategy number two, how are we for time? We're good. Six points, strong trend in your favor. Breakout obvious supply demand imbalance. Yeah. So the obvious supply demand imbalance is just not a strong trend. Little stall, small pullback in price, not a big level rejection. We don't want it going up to a key level and just coming back off. I'm always nervous um, of buying stuff that's already hit a key level. Um, let's, you know, maybe use that as a magnet. That's far more effective, in my opinion. No signs of exhaustion. We don't want to be the trend's gone up like five with five pullbacks in a row, and then you're taking the ticks to zero trade. No, no, you know, this is this first pullback type thing. First momentum, pullback, time it. It's not like it's been going and going and going, and then you're trying to get on it. Now, you could probably go back yesterday and see that it happen multiple times, but I think it reduces its efficacy uh, the further down the path you take it. So watch out for those multiple pullbacks extended period, period of time. Uh, ticks then retrace to zero or close to zero and then you take a trade in the direction of the trend. So you know, if you're long, the market's gone up, pulls back to zero, you're then long for an extension uh, back to highs uh, and exit into a new tick extreme as an optional way to get out of things. Okay, strategy number two, exhaustions in tick. So the tick index can be used to time your trade exits already entered or you can use it potentially to fade 
uh, moves if you're if you're a real kind of aggressive scalper or you're kind of getting a leg in of an idea that you've already got. So as price approaches your target, leverage on tick extremes to time that exit. So use ticks as your exit signal rather than price. There's two options there, really. So one is if you've got a target and price is coming up to a price target, let's say, resistance level coming out of that long trade, you might say, hey, if the ticks, I might give a little bit more room as it breaks through and just come out on ticks, or I might come out a little bit earlier if the ticks spiking to plus 1,200, plus 1,300, that type of thing, and I'm long. I'm like, well, how much more could it really do? Oh, I'm pushing my luck here. You think about it, what's happening under the bonnet, bang, loads of people are buying on offer, buying on offer, buying on offer. That's showing up in the tick index. And that's showing up in price for it to do more. It's going to have to be more offer, more offer. And you've already exhausted all those people who have already bought. Not to say it won't, but you think about how that works. Um, and one thing to do, which I like to do, is if I'm a trade, is like, listen, I'm going to stay in the trade until I get an exit signal on tick. So let's explore that a little bit further. So imagine you shorted this rejection bar after tagging that overnight high. A pretty standard trade that I know many of you might like to play. And again, I'm using the example of coming. I'm not suggesting that this is. Uh, I'm just imagining that you, were, you you got short, and that would be a good reason I need to get short. So you're short on that rejection bar. You're like, okay, where do I come out? Do I come out at prior lows? Yeah, that's reasonable. Um, do I kind of come out at a thousand points? Like, how do I structure it? And we always kind of try to judge these trade targets. So one way is just to wait until you get that extreme in ticks. And a great way to time your exit is to say, listen, you know, as soon as we get that extreme tick reading under under uh, under minus a thousand, I'm out. And so that helps take the pressure off. You're like, okay, I'm in. I'm in on this on this entry signal. It wasn't particularly a tick-based entry signal, but I'm in on it. And you know what? If the tick suddenly spikes to the downside, go through minus 1,000, that's my exit. And so there you go. There's a minus 1,000 tick reading. Is it the low? No, but it's a kind of exhaustion type uh, play, right? So there's something to, something to look at. And I think that's really useful, really, really useful. Uh, and I use this, this a lot, actually, this, this kind of tick reading exit. Another example, imagine you shorted a trend line break with a pullback. Classical technical structure, this breaking a trend line, trying to come back, or you or you shorted a break of lows, or whatever. However, you got short. Imagine you were short. Okay, there's no way to come out on this trade. Um, I feel like it's going to go through the floor. I don't want to hold to the close per se. And and there's an argument to say that you perhaps could, but not all trades are like that, right? You might think it's a, a few hour rotation or a 15 minute rotation or whatever it is, or a bit of momentum you're going to capture. You know, we've all got our own alignment for the trade and structure so you might say right hey i'm going to hold it until i get a really low reading in ticks like a brand new low reading in ticks and so as before we were going minus a thousand here you might say on a new low in ticks and the low i've marked off i often mark off the low and the high in ticks you know with a horizontal line and here we had a new low reading in ticks just here and that's a good good time to kind of get out now obviously it went lower but look how it's uncanny, right? It's uncanny how often, and if you think about it, it makes sense because if that's just like, hey, everyone's just hitting those bids after it's been at high, everyone's hitting the bids at lows, it feels like the last batch. It feels like the last exhaustion move. It feels like something that could run out of steam. And so that minus tick reading there, I put 1197 because that was the, um, the low there was 1173. So that was a brand new low in tick. So literally, as soon as you see that, I'm covering, like I'm covering the trade. Uh, and then you're using the ticks as an exit signal rather than price. Okay, so that was uh, you're know, using the the ticks as an exhaustion signal. Uh, one thing I didn't mention, but I want to actually while while it's on here is um, the, ov the obvious question might be, hey, um, can I use these as an entry signal, the exhaustion? And my answer to that is yes, but with a caveat of, of be careful because very often, if it's in a real trending environment, it's only short-term, you know, uh, pause in the trend. So you could be nimble, I guess, but I feel like a better trade is to use fade these only in a, a mean reversion environment. So if we are range bound, we're taking out highs, we're taking out lows, we're oscillating around a VWAP, then by all means, that might be a trigger signal for you to get in because you want to trade counter trend. You want to trade against it because you're in a mean reversion environment. But I feel that if you are in a, a very, very trending environment, then using this as an entry signal is slightly dangerous and not something I'd particularly do. Um, I guess you could argue, you could argue that, hey, at the end of a trend, at the end of multi kind of pullbacks and moves, that this could be, uh, you know, a final hurrah, if you like. And then that, that's something to that's something to uh, uh, 
uh, to explore potentially. But I think you know, aligning with the trend is better, especially at the moment anyway. Okay, third strategy is the wide range in ticks. So this is really, this is kind of just like a flashing light going, hey, listen, look, look, look at me, look, look, look here now. It's the sudden change in ticks saying, right, we've gone from low ticks, low ticks, low ticks, bang, all of a sudden sentiment has changed in a second. Right, we've just got this wide range bar, bang. We've had ticks at minus 1,000, now they're at plus 300 within a minute period or less than a minute because it's a minute candle, still a minute bar. And that's why I kind of monitor this with the uh, one period ATR. So high ATR reading, that big wide range bar, and it can often be a short-term changing trend. It's either a scalp trade or maybe the, the, the sentiment has shifted. Like it's the bottom of the trend, that's it. And often, and often you get a kind of, that's, like, that's it. That kind of the trend changes and we're off to the races, or at least we're consolidating. And so that's when that ATR comes in, the lower part of the of your chart, uh, sending it to one and saying, right, hey, hang on. When we get that big shift in sentiment, because just think what's going on. It's like people hitting bids, people hitting bids, all of a sudden, bang, whatever it is, algo, humans, anything, just going, we don't want to wait, we want to buy now. And that's interesting, isn't it? That's so interesting, because we're seeing that people want to buy now. And now, does that mean that that's going to be the, the low for it? No, of course not. But it sometimes is a really good indication that's a start of maybe an algo that's been triggered, maybe a change in sentiment, maybe short covering, whatever it might be. Uh, here's one here. Wide range in ticks, potential shift in sentiment or algo kicking in, especially if you kind of coincide this with, uh, was it a couple of months ago we did the webinar on uh, algos, um, of finding edges, I can't remember now, but if you're top of the hour, bottom of the hour type of thing and you're looking for those edges at certain points of time of day, which should be, by the way, an intraday trader, there's a big edge there, then if you see this wide range in ticks and you see whew, big shift accompanied in price, then often that is a good indication that you want to get committed. So here we go. We're kind of pregnant at lows, not quite going through the prior lows here. Uh, we've got an hour and 15 minutes until the bell. And we have this consistent low tick reading, moving average, moving average at lows, as you would expect for a downtrend here. Uh, markets kind of going low and pulling back to zero, pulling back and lower and lower and lower. And <laughs> the irony of me saying, don't take it after the first attempt and it's done three. But goes up, pulls up, comes back, and then we just get a shift in sentiment. Just a huge shift in sentiment. Bang, ticks go, this widest range of ticks we've had. Big shift in sentiment. That's one bar there. And that gives you plenty of opportunity to potentially jump on this and say, right, hey, I think it's a shift in sentiment. Uh, and me, and again, never a trade recommendation, guys, you know the score, but I would go, right, that's that's worth a, that's worth a go. I've been looking for that type of thing. Uh, if you've been looking for it, let's assume you have, you need a signal, maybe you're looking for a little dip below the low, it didn't hold, whatever it may be, that might be an indication that you go, hey, big change in sentiment ticks, doesn't go back to zero straight, in fact, it's continued, 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 let me hold it. Now, if you were kind of ultra scalpy, Scalpy, is that a name word? Yeah, let's go with it. If you're ultra scalpy, uh, you probably close it off at the highs there. But if it was something you were looking for maybe to close at the end of the day and a trend change, you might say, fine, hey, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the ticks have just changed their their structure completely here. You know, low to low, now they're, the average of ticks is trading above zero, equaling up trending price. But look how that was that was ignited by that extension in ticks. Really, really useful. Okay. Uh, what have we covered? What are the ticks? Number one, setting up your screens, super valuable. Uh, the ticks to zero trade, which is the, the kind of strategy, effective, uh, what I think is effective momentum-based strategy. Exiting your trade on tick extremes. So when we get those kind of big tick extremes, it, it really does give you an indication that, hey, there's a lot of buying. And this is, you know, and, the, and the moving average of ticks giving you a kind of flavor of, of where the buying or selling is. And, and just to remind you guys, this is not an indicator. This is not me saying this is the stochastic or the CCI or whatever it is. This is an index supplied by the New York Stock Exchange that is unbelievably telling us what is happening across all the instruments. Buying, selling, buying, selling, the aggressor. Who is the aggressor? We know that the aggressor is the one that moves price. So, it's worth exploring. I think it's worth exploring. And like I say, if you don't trade this instrument, of course, fine. You know, um, it might not be for you. But if you are an intraday day trader of US equities, then I think it's worth exploring. I really do. Uh, so ways to learn this skill. Watch price in relation to ticks. How I spent 
um, not two decades. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't uh, find the tick index until way into my trading career, but it's got to be a decade plus of watching ticks. Not every day, obviously, but seeing how price responds to ticks, seeing price in relation to ticks, that's key to this. Find examples of the patterns we discussed today. So ticks to zero, go have a look and have a look and say, hey, um, you know, what are the patterns? What can I, can I see any historically and how they work? When they failed, where would I put my stop on it? How would I kind of structure the trade? Mark up your charts at the end of the trading day. Big fan of that. I don't lean on the ticks too much. It's not a silver bullet. You can be, you can, if you're not careful, go, oh, I'm just going to use the ticks. And, and it can feel like they're such a good tool. And they are, but ultimately price is price, right? If price is trending higher, then the ticks could be exhausting for a long period of time. You've got to fit it into the structure of price. Uh, observe how they could fit into your existing strategy. Uh, an impulse, as with everything trading, guys, you could have a 100% success rate or 100% effective strategy, should I say. And if you trade impulsively and trade substandard rubbish, you're just going to kill your edge. So the impulse will kill this edge. And the reason why it kind of adds a bit more fuel to the fire with this is that you are observing very, very short-term price action. A very, very short-term price action has a tendency to suck traders into trading far more actively. So just be aware of that. Impulse will kill this edge. Be patient, man. Be patient. I can't, you know, honestly, it's not a webinar on patience, but it's the one skill that is just so essential. If you can just wait for your trade and be prepared to miss trades, you just change your results. Just change overnight. A different, different, different trader. Different trader. Uh, okay, slides. If you want them, guys, tradersmastermind.com forward slash ticks. Let me check the questions. I, I also would like to gently plug the podcast gently just gently i'm gonna go crazy check it out guys the uh i've got a great few interviews on there loads of good guests coming up as well keep those quiet for now uh tom who on there steve ward's on there developing trader series where we talk to traders who are improving and i kind of make some suggestions that to help them improve and some solo episodes as well uh if you like this kind of stuff you will like the podcast i know that no i don't know that i i, I think you probably all right, quick questions. Who we got? There he is, Mr. B. Uh, hi, Mark. Is this typically tradable through UK brokers? I can't find an IG. Uh, not looking for the right term. Thanks. Uh, they don't allow it. I don't think they give you the feed for it, but you're basically using that tick index as a proxy to trade the the Dow, right? The Dow or the uh, S and P 500. So it's not a tradable instrument as such. Um, and I don't think any of the uh, UK brokers offer it. Um, yeah, Pepperstone don't offer it. It's because it comes straight from the New York, New York Stock Exchange. It's an index. It's not a tradable index. In fact, you know what? That'd be so cool if it was because you just hammer it, at, you know, un, under a thousand. But you use it as a kind of proxy. Uh, yeah, you, you probably have to pick that up from Trading View, uh, Chris, or one of the um, charting providers. All right, uh, Bezad Bezadi. Apologies if I butchered that. Isn't it a lagging indicator? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. This is not a lagging indicator. Uh, and I'm really glad you asked that question because that's such a thing that is moving averages lagging, right? Because it's 20 period, it's 20 periods ago. This is what's happening right in this second. You know, going back to the point of what the ticks are, good, really good question, really good question. Going back to what the ticks are, okay, uh, they are um, literally an instant at that very second, what is happening? So it's like, take a photo of how many stocks are trading on an uptick, how many stocks are trading on a downtick. You can't get more real time than that. That is real time. So when you see that and you say, wow, there are all these stocks trading on uptick, there's not many stocks trading on a downtick, that just, okay, how you, inf how you infer that information is up to you. How you infer that information is up to you. But you're literally saying right at that point in time, there's a 1,500 people, man, who are hitting that offer. There's 1,000 people hitting that bid, right? Wow, there's 2,000 people hitting the offer. There's 500 people hitting that bid. That's a big ticks. Wow, you know, can that be sustained? And then you go, right, can it be sustained? How are we looking on price? Well, we're really extended in the trend. Maybe that's the exhaustion move. You know, so it's 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 literally, uh, it's, it's, no, it's, it's a really good question that it's not lagging. It's an instant snapshot. Now, this is not a perfect tool by any stretch of imagination. Um, but what you can do is you can make inferences. As you see this meter kind of super aggressive and you feel like the trend is ending, maybe that's kind of the end. If you see it kind of reversing and then super aggressive coming in, like that big extension in ticks, 
that's something that you might want to get on. Um, you know, the re little retracement where you've seen price pushing up and strong ticks and then pulling back a little bit, that's a good, so it, it's just literally that instant snapshot, ding, 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 and it, it's, it, it gets fed uh, in real time as well. I guess I should have been more clear on that, um, that it just gets fed in real time uh, as well. And also, yeah, perhaps I should have been clear at the beginning that you can't trade this product. This is uh, an index that just gives you information about what's happening under the bonnet uh, of the New York Stock Exchange. You would use this as a proxy and as a tool to trade the Dow or the S&P 500, or if you were trading the NASDAQ, you'd use the tick Q, which again would just be the uh, supply by the NASDAQ and it'd be an index just giving you kind of that information. Uh, so yes, all right guys, thank you very much. Um, been a pleasure as always. Hope you have found some value in this one. Advanced, I know, but if you are an advanced trader, intermediate trader, looking for something a little bit different, maybe something a little, add another uh, quiver to your bow, then, uh, or oh, arrow to your quiver, then uh, check it out. Take care. See you soon. Bye-bye.